Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are creating the ultimate beginner's guide to city skylines by creating the city of Trattoria. And in this episode, we're introducing the Sunset Harbor DLC. This is a really interesting DLC that adds a couple of unique features, including the inner city bus service, trolley bus and aviation club for transportation, uh, the fishing industry, and a few new utility buildings, including water treatment plants, uh, and uh, new water towers. It also brought five new maps into the game and three new policies. And in this video, we're gonna go over the utility buildings, the fishing industry, and a couple of the policies. So before we get diving in, I do wanna introduce a couple of housekeeping things. I was able to get the build fixed, and as a result, the population rebounded. It's been a bit of a process, and if you're on the Discord server, you probably saw some of it. What I'm thinking is we've got our new utility buildings, and it'd be really great to use them. But these buildings, let's let's go through what they are. So when we go into the garbage menu, what we now have is a waste transfer facility and a waste processing complex. And in the water menu, we have a couple of waste processing or er, waste water processing buildings. So the Eco Inland Water Treatment Plant and the Eco Advanced Inland Water Treatment Plant as well as these new large water towers. We're going to use all of them. Well, we'll use the large ones. <laughs> so the reason why I think using the Eco Advanced Inland Water Treatment Plant is so great, first of all, it's a very attractive asset. But if we take a look, one of the things that's really great about this is that you see that the pollution is low, the noise is low, the cost, you know, relatively inexpensive. The upkeep is about the same as the Eco Advanced Water Treatment Plant. It's, it's 560 for both. But one thing it doesn't do that these plants do do is produce any sort of water pollution. So the easiest way to see the water pollution that this is generating is actually to look at your fishing industry. And what you can see is even though there's not a lot of water pollution produced by these, and we're taking care of some of it with these uh, floating garbage uh, collectors, there's still some. Now this, right here makes this not a good spot to, to, to have a fishing industry. It will lower the, the production of fish and that's not something that we want. So we are going to eliminate these in favor of a fishing industry, but we need to find a place to build our new water. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is replace some of our garbage collection facilities. So we have right now a whole bunch of incinerators right here. And I'll go into the nuance of that right now. So if we take a look at the waste processing complex and the waste transfer facility, you need them both. So the waste processing complex actually processes the garbage and sends out vehicles to the waste transfer facility to pick up the trash and bring it to the waste processing complex. The waste transfer facilities actually go out into your community and pick up the trash from your residents. So you need both for them to function. The nice thing about the waste transfer facilities, it's not very loud and it doesn't produce much pollution. So you could reasonably come and put this in a really dense urban area if you're having trash collection problems. So generally, if you look at the incineration plant, we're looking at $1,444 a week in upkeep, processing capacity, we'll just call it 50,000 and pollution of 100. If we look at this, Pollution's 250, so it's huge. You can't put this next to anything. But the upkeep is about four times the cost, and the uh, and the uh, the processing rate is about four times the processing rate of the incinerator. So it's it allows you to concentrate these in in one place. Even the power output is approximately four times, give or take a little bit here or there around the edges. Uh, the water is about half uh, of of what it would take for the new waste processing complex. But you gotta, you gotta also factor in the, uh, the water and the electricity usage of these transfer facilities. So in general, this will be more intensive from an energy standpoint, but it's much more flexible and will allow you to spread out some of your traffic and ensure that your city's operating a little bit more efficiently. So I think that when we're looking at this, there's a couple of interesting places that we could put this. Got all this land right here that is industrial in nature 
and could reasonably have good highway access if we made a couple of changes. So I'm thinking that this could have maybe a trumpet over here that could lead into town. And what you'll see is over here, we've got a collector. And what I'm thinking is we upgrade this to a collector all the way to here and have a trumpet leading up to this. So it's gonna be a bit of a project and this would be one that I'm not sure would ever happen in reality. And that's because of some of the land use decisions that, are, that were done here. It would potentially need the road to shift. You can see that there's a school, a clinic, a high school, a library, <laughs> you know, just a whole bunch of stuff. But we are gonna take some liberties because it's a game. Oh, we've also got, it looks like a crematorium. But we'll take some liberties. It's a game, we'll have some fun with it. That was by no means a small project. We're gonna fix up the land uses here because they're a little bit off now, and then we will move on. Okay, and we've got a whole bunch of vanilla traffic management to do here, but we're not quite there just yet, so I'm not gonna worry about it. And as I look at this, I, I wanna look at the terrain to see the best place to come in. This is actually a pretty poor place to come in because of the amount of soil that we have to work with. I might actually come in here and change the roadway pattern here. So let's just go ahead and I'm gonna stub in a road just so we can see. And back here is where we're gonna put some of our new utilities. We're gonna to need to buffer this because right here, this is a, a clean forestry industry. And the last thing we wanna do is pollute this. So we will need to have some sort of buffer, but that that's, a, that's small potatoes compared to what we're about to do right now. And that is to really do some significant work here to make this happen. I'm just sloping up and down here to try to make a nice ramp once we finally get to building our ramps, which is gonna be one of the first things that we do, truthfully. Uh, it's gonna be very important that this, this has a lot of symmetry. And that's something that I guess I, I care about when, when I'm building these. So approximately right here, and I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna hop back into my info views, turn on my terrain heights here, and I want it, I'm gonna build everything using these two lane gravel roads. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is build a road parallel on both sides. And that'll be approximately where it comes. And those line up pretty well. If we pop out now, we can see that these are pretty even. So we're gonna be using all of the tools of the trade to make this happen. First of all, we're gonna pop this up. We'll take our elevation step down and I wanna be really careful with this. We wanna use angle and road guidelines and nothing else. And even road guidelines, we might turn off just so we have a little bit more control after we get our first control point with that road. There we go. So look at that bridge span, that is perfect. That's exactly what we need. It goes all the way across the highway. So now I'm gonna turn on road length, grid, and angle. We're gonna take this up another, we'll go, we'll call it five. And you can tell when you get five because that other line will show up, that one above. And then we're gonna use our curved road tool and start our descent. We'll come up five again, that comes up. We'll drop it down one, drop it down one more. And here we're gonna use our curved road tool and we'll just turn this in. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing over here. And these are gonna change, so don't get too, uh, I guess, particular about those. They're, they're ugly right now, we're gonna fix them. So we'll come through, we'll drag those out. I'm gonna eliminate this, pull this back just underneath the bridge. And then we are gonna use our curved road tool. It's not gonna give us a guide. So we're gonna need to guess a little bit here. You can see I picked right at the curve and look at that curve it gave us. It's just, it's just beautiful. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing, but we're gonna have to do it from this side and it's gonna be considerably harder. For this one, I'm gonna turn on road guidelines. We'll come up with say a 43 degree angle and I might need to back this out just a bit further. I'll create a new node. And again, back to creating my angle. And I wonder if we can't tighten that up a little bit. Let's pull it a bit closer. And why don't we start from the other side? 
Yeah, I like that. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we have this, and the big thing I'm worried about is I want this to line up very nicely with this road guideline, and you can see it's already very unhappy with me. I think I went way higher than I had to. And then from here, we would do the exact same thing. There we go. Okay, so I had to drop it down a little bit, and that's not a huge deal. Just had to kind of reboot and go back to square one. That'll happen from time to time. Let's get this to, to be the right road. I want this to be a two lane highway. And you can see that it's accepted some of it, but not all of it. There we go. And I might try to get away with doing this with the highway. They curve, which is one of the main reasons that I don't do this often. See, uh, right here, I'm trying to create that ramp and it curves. Not ideal. And this is where we will have our four lane road. Here we'll convert this for our on ramp. And what we're trying to avoid is going so far that it's just kind of unreasonable or so close that it, it's just, it's a really sharp angle. We'll do the exact same thing over here. And now we just need to clean up our mess. That, that to me feels Pretty good. We could also raise this up over here and ensure that this is rather than a gigantic bridge. Really, we only want bridge over the highway. Ideally, I would say that the bridge would start right here, ideally. But this is getting really particular and it gets considerably harder to get this right. But I was able to. I just created another node and you can make that happen. So we can do the exact same thing on the other side. In fact, I'm going to do it just to show you because I think it, that, that the end result looks a little bit nicer. This one's not quite as nice. I think I would have preferred to have this set back, maybe another tile or so to make this look perfect. Uh, so it's a little bit janky over here. We could clean some of that up with landscaping. Some of it's just kind of inevitable. This is the way it's going to look if we don't move it. I'm going to be okay with it. We are we are going to introduce mods at some point to this. And at that point, we can, we can clean some of this up. But for the time being, if I were playing vanilla and I had this, I think I'd be pretty pleased with the way it turned out and decide maybe something like this, having some sort of foliage along the side or better yet, better yet. We've got all these new grasses. I wonder if we change the time of day so we can see this a little bit better. Yeah, I don't know how much I love that. <laughs> and all of that extra work is my sign that I should let perfect... I shouldn't let, let perfect be the enemy here. <laughs> because that's what I'm doing. Oh, and I did it again. <laughs> Okay, and the main reason I did that was I want to have the trees extend all the way up here. Not a huge deal, but something that means a lot to me. So I'm going to back this out now and let's get this road running all the way down here. Then we'll use our curved road tool with our road guidelines. Find that guideline, click on it, and pull that right in. Now, before this makes a big impact, I want to look at our traffic. We're at 86%. That's not bad. And I think we're going to be just fine. But... I think we could be even better. This train is going to cause some issues for us. So what we're going to do is reconstruct this a little bit. And rather than dropping down through here, we're going to elevate this or continue the elevation of this. And I'll go with my 12, one. And I'm going to do even less. So I actually dropped this up to here, one to get over the road. And now I'm just continuing all the way through here until I connect it up. Now we have one less conflict point here. Now remember we've got our new DLC which gives us the ability to upgrade our trees. I guess that's just part of the base game now. So there we go. Feeling festive. So I want this to make a connection all the way through. So we will upgrade this and now we're going to sever some roads and we'll make it look like a, a major highway project came through here and did this. 
find our guideline at the very end using our curved road tool connect right in now i'm going to establish whatever i can re-establish in terms of the road grid i think a lot of it's going to be challenging thankfully our bike corridor is fine i'll downgrade that again we don't need that what we're going to do is turn off road length i'm not going to be able to make a connection here so what i'm going to do is dead end a couple of roads and what that will do for me is give me the opportunity to, to again establish that street grid and show it being cut off which you'll often see when some of these collector and arterial projects go through that they just end up terminating a whole bunch of roads and that's completely fine now we're going to finish the zoning through here and this was mostly residential and we'll keep it as such so now that we got this running again, we should see some traffic start to take up things here. And what we're gonna wanna do is just prioritize this road and then look at all of our junctions, particularly the ones that we just made here. We don't need that or that or that. That will cause problems. There we go. We don't even really need that stop sign there because there are two lanes. So this should work really well. Hop on the highway come through here no conflicts very smooth and then here this is a collector collector connection so we will signalize that and then all these local roads are going to give priority to this collector oh that one is <laughs> a collector so now you, you you would see that you have a, a really clear shot all the way through from highway to highway no problem oh looks like i missed some over here so let's fix these as well. Thankfully, this road is already prioritized and it looks like I even messed up the main drag here. So we will get that fixed. Never a bad idea to come back through and see what you've done. There's unnecessary stop signs here. All of these things being left behind could really mess up the traffic. And we don't want that to be the case. And I think this was a one way and that's why that was set that way. The one way again acts as a collector couplet, which is why we want those prioritized. But now that this is no longer a one way, no need to have that. Okay, so as we look at this, traffic is has dropped. <laughs> well, you know, it'll get better. So let's come through here and we're gonna do the exact same thing. I will get close to connecting here. We will collect connect here. This will be our last connection into this area because we don't wanna get too close to our throat. We don't want a, a, a close throat length between this and our junctions here. And then we'll throw all of our snap twos back on because I want to do a couple of interesting things. So we're going to establish a grid here again. And we'll connect that right back in. And then here, we're going to do something very similar. Let's bring that through. Trying to find a nice logical way to connect this. It's kind of tough. These are two very separate and different grids. Should probably be using my industry roads as well. So I don't have some kind of stark transitions through here. So I'll, I'll get all of these upgraded. Downgraded, depending on how you look at it. We have one bike lane road here too. We'll get rid of that. Okay, so what I've done is, is create a new grid pattern here. So we're gonna be using this new grid that lines up well with this. And we'll just do something pretty simple because we're gonna change this anyway. So I'm just doing a 20, I'll turn off our guidelines at this point, 10 by 20. And we're gonna end up changing this to fit in our public works campus. But I want the general frame of this to be in place. and curved the road tool to make that one connection through here. So this will be what we work with. And I love doing this. We can now look at our terrain to see where the flattest spot is to put some of these buildings right here. This little 20 by 20 square looks like it would be ideal for one of these waste processing complexes. In fact, I might even sever this road here and add two. We'll need to modify this road a bit to make that happen. And those slight angles are making this a little challenging. But 
it'll work out just fine. A little bit of imperfection gives the city some character, some unique zoning patterns, and I like it. So we've gone through now. This is going to create a lot, a lot, lot, lot of pollution. This is 500 pollution in one area. So we need to be cognizant of that. In fact, I'm going to be so cognizant of that. I'm going to change the zoning here. We're going to zone this for offices. They can tolerate the pollution just a little bit more than this forestry industry. And then we'll zone out our forestry all the way out to here and end it right there. In fact, I'm going to change the land use along this road so that what you're seeing are offices with the forestry industry hidden behind it. And we'll do the exact same thing along this corridor. So that is what you're seeing. To try to think about and preserve those view sheds. Not a lot you can do to make this pretty. We're gonna add some landscaping here. We could add some buildings, but it's gonna be kind of ugly. But cities need these sorts of uses, so we shouldn't be overly concerned about the, the aesthetics of it. You just, you need some of these things. Let's look at our water pipes. We're gonna to need to put those in underneath our roads, right where they belong. Okay, so we should be all set here, but what I wanna do is put in our water processing buildings as well. Now you'll see that again, these don't fit perfectly in here either. So we're gonna place these right here and we're gonna to need to change that road that we just built. Not a big deal. In fact, we might go a little bit more intense with that change. Uh, so I also, we should look at our terrain. We've got some topography here and that is potentially a reason to reorient this. So let's come through here. We'll modify our terrain. And we're going to go a little bit more extreme. So all of that work. <laughs> Best laid plans sometimes need to be rethought out. And I'm wondering if we could berm this a little bit to hide some of this. Put trees on the berm and then that would help uh, hide a bit of the ugliness of this area. So I'm placing three of these and we should take a look at what these do. So the capacity here is 160,000. Over here, it's 160,000. So we're gonna need to one for one replace these. And that is going to be, they're basically the same in terms of cost. So there's really not a reason not to use these. And if you don't have a water body, you should absolutely use these. So we have seven of these processing buildings over here. So we're going to need seven right here. That's going to be a process. Let's make it happen. And you can see we're running into terrain again. And I don't know that we're going to be able to get all seven right here. So that that's kind of an unfortunate reality we're going to need to deal with. It would have been nice. We might need to have a couple of smaller ones to fill in the gaps. Now, thankfully, these do not produce nearly as much pollution. Now, when we look at the smaller ones, they're a dramatically worse deal. If we take a look, they produce significantly more pollution. It's 45 instead of the seven. So I don't want to do all that many of these. Uh, we'll put a couple. Oh, they're up a hill. Maybe we'll just skip it and see if we can get away with four or six. I'm not I'm not convinced that we'll be able to. Okay, so we have tons of water processing, sewage processing capacity here. I'm going to delete these and we'll see what happens. Ooh, we are right on the border. So we'll probably want to think about where to place another one of those. And in fact, it's going to be an issue for us if we are growing our population. We have 3,000 more we need to grow by the end of the episode. So that's going to be a thing that we need to think about. I'm not going to get overly concerned right now about that. In fact, I'm not even thrilled with the way that this turned out because we have a little bit of a lumpy here that I wish that we didn't have. Well, we can deal with that. So what we're going to do is burn this up a little bit. And I'm even thinking of this highway. It makes sense to change that a bit. 
Not something that would happen in reality, but in the game we have the ability to. So there we go, it's a berm, so if you were on the highway, it would pop up, and we could put some landscaping and foliage along there. Okay, so now, if you were on the highway, it's not quite as visible. It's not quite as bad. It's not great, but it's not terrible. So there we go, we'll accept that. Still can't stand the way this looks. We're gonna do something to fix that, just a little, little something. Okay, that's not perfect, but I think it's better. So we'll have that bridge structure there, not the end of the world. So there we go, we've hit this, we've got this going, this isn't operating. So you, you can tell right now there's no garbage reserves, there's no trucks in use, and that is because we do not have a full, uh, a full cycle for this. And what we need to complete the system is a waste transfer facility, at least one, but we're gonna want many. So I'm gonna place one over here this would fit well. Make sure our power is connected. And this would bring trash from over here into this other area. We'll also come over here and replace some of these incineration units. And we'll replace them with these waste transfer facilities. Now, we're going to want to redo our roads here so that they make more sense for this particular use. In reality, probably pretty unlikely to have that happen. But then again, the facility would likely be sized appropriately for this use. So we can take some liberties. Yeah, so in reality, I would assume that the building would be designed to conform to these this roadway network. So I'm not overly concerned with blasting away a couple of roads to make this fit. And then I want to look at what our garbage processing status is. We're pretty good. So I'm going to add in just a couple of, uh, just maybe a recycling center over here, just to kind of round it out. That will generate a lot of traffic right here. We've got two waste processing complexes, but I'm not overly concerned. Not the end of the world. Now, we could have potentially backed these out to allow for something a little more significant over here terms of the water but you're going to accept what we've done we'll leave it as is and we'll even round this out with a bit of decoration just a little something to hide the lumpies and bumpies over here I think that's a lot better just because it's a an area that processes trash doesn't mean it needs to look, look like garbage so <laughs> we can we can uh, we can do a little bit better in fact, why don't we finish this off? I think you just gotta have a little bit of fun with it sometimes. There we go. So, not the, not the most exciting facility to create, but it works well. And now when we take a look at our garbage processing facility, there are three waste transfer trucks in use that are going to the waste transfer facilities. The waste transfer facilities are going out to collect trash. And we could even get more extreme with these waste transfer facilities. I've got, at this point, three. We could probably have quite a few more. If we take a look at this, um, you know, these facilities, this has 20 vehicles, so we've got a total of 60. If we wanted some more, we could pop through here and add these into some of the more remote areas of our, of our city. So over here, if we notice that there's any place that didn't have excellent trash coverage, we can now come over here and say, we're gonna add it. Let's look at our terrain. And now we have garbage processing over in this area as well. And this will serve this area very well. So the other thing that we can do is if we pop in, oh, we can't change it for this particular building. I thought maybe we could change the trash collection, not for those. The recycling center, can we do it there? Not for those. So it's just some of our old facilities. So something to keep in mind, you can't change the vehicle for this, which is completely fine. And that actually may be, now that I think about it, I don't have the content creator pack enabled for the new vehicles, and I don't have any custom vehicles, so maybe it's just not gonna work for me. 
A way to test that is this is new functionality that came with the most recent City Skylines update. If we were to find a police department, does it give us the option? Ah, oh, yeah, we don't have the option. So we will test that functionality out when we bring in vehicles of the world at a later date. So, okay, we've got our trash situation resolved. We take a look at this. Traffic flow is doing all right. We're at 86%. Let's worry about our fishing industry now. And the fishing industry is interesting. Uh, actually, let's not worry about our fishing industry. Let's worry a little bit about getting a new neighborhood set up so we hit our population threshold. And what we're going to do today is just fill in this area right here. It's going to be a challenging area because of the terrain. If we take a look, it is a plateau. We're going to move some dirt to make this happen. So what we're going to do is we'll come over here. We're going to flatten out part of this. I'm going to grab this terrain height here. And we'll level this. And that's not because I think that would happen in reality, but because in the game, this would be a next to impossible place to develop and make it look anywhere reasonable in vanilla. So if you've got to make a couple of changes to the terrain to make it look a little more reasonable, I say go for it. You can also try to make it work. You've got to accept some lumpies and bumpies. And the biggest thing you're going to have to worry about is really micro detailing some of these. So if you don't like these cliff side ruining things happening, you're going to need to go through and, and really decorate. You can do that. You can go and add grass and different things. And maybe you can make it look a little bit nicer. But even at that, they're kind of floating. You'd need a lot of them. And for something like this, I would still like to use a mod. So you either accept some imperfection or you terrace it out a bit. So I'm going to terrace it out. Not a lot, but I've created a little terrace down here that I can work with, a little terrace up here that I can work with. And then we're going to slope up to that terrace. So we'll go into our slope terrain tool, pick our top height, and we'll come down to where we're going to go. Pull that right up here. So what that'll do for us is it might not look like it right now. It's going to allow us to have a nice smooth road up here. Wow, is that steep. <laughs> so let's give that another go. We'll even give ourselves some space there. And why don't we flatten out this? Because that'll help us. And then we'll pick a spot just a little bit further out, grab our flat spot and slope up from there. Yeah, very challenging to make that look nice, but it's still possible. And then I think we're going to freeform quite a bit up here. We're going to follow the terrain and respect the topography. We've already bent the topography to our will as much as we as, as much as we probably should. Maybe even a little bit more than we should. So from here on out, let's do our best not to do that. <laughs> I'm going to back this off to give a little bit of separation for noise. At the roundabout, it's kind of unavoidable that we are going to bump into this. And then we'll come through here. I'm going to do that at an angle. We'll curve this road in. So the curved road tool is our friend here, so we can make perfect lines. And we don't need to make these lots perfect. Oh, and we don't need to use our industry roads. <laughs> In fact, why don't we use some of our tree line streets on the outside? We won't allow parking on these. And on the inside, we will. And we'll upgrade those to roads that we like when we get to it. So we'll come through here. What I'm going to do is just make a couple of blocks that are really straight and then we'll use our curved road tool to line up with some of our nodes and make connections don't get me wrong this is still a grid but it is a little bit more interesting and there we go so we are going to have some pretty intense residential up here the rationale i'm going to use is that we have fairly good freeway access and excellent views so this is not going to be the most walkable place unless we do something to improve that. But I think we have an opportunity because of some of the transit that we have near us as well. 
Okay, so if you look down here, we have transit access. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pop into here. We're gonna use the pads that came with our Park Life DLC. And the reason why I wanna use these is they're self-leveling. So especially when you're popping up hills, this can be super helpful. It, it does the grading for you, which is absolutely wonderful because this would be very challenging especially with a path to get this right. Not easy, not easy at all. So then I'm adjusting the terrains down and up a little bit, and then we're smoothing out to try to make this look a little bit better. We might need to come through and do some smaller strokes. So just find a spot on the path, push it back just a little bit, and then pull it back on this other side. And that will give us a slightly more natural grade. We can come through and try to smooth some of that out. And you can see there are already people walking using this. And they're going to use it even more as we build residential up here. We also need a bit of commercial. We could use some office. And we are going to do that. So we'll have a little bit of a mixed use core up here. And before this gets going, let's place a district here. And just to fit the atmosphere of this area, we'll have it be another green cities district. Self-sufficient buildings. And I think that'll be the only specialization that we have here. We could go through here and look at our policies as well and potentially have things like high-tech housing if we wanted this to be a little bit more valuable, which I think we do. Let's also look at our needs for this area, our clinic, we're fine there. That's going to cover this area. Fire coverage could probably use a bit. And this is a big cul-de-sac. We're going to need to fix that too. That's not acceptable. Yeah, and it's going to be very challenging. We're going to need to meander a road up. So what we're going to do is just kind of cut back this way. And the reason why I say that's unacceptable is... From an emergency response standpoint, there's just no way that you can serve this area effectively with only one connection in. There we go. Not perfect, but not terrible. At least it spreads out that grade a bit. And then I think for the rest of this, after we get a couple of core services worked in, we're gonna have residential. So we'll have police and fire, we'll look at school coverage. Not good. We'll add a community school. For our high school, again, not great coverage. We'll use some less than desirable land for our high school, and that'll kind of block some of the things happening here. And hopefully the power will jump across. And we'll add a couple parks as well. There we go. I like that. So a little note of activity here, a little plaza on the side. We've got our core services and the rest of the neighborhood is residential. And we will taper up with the density. And we'll get up here and this will be this really high dense, high density node of activity up here. That's going to work out really well for us. And I think it's what we need right now. And then we'll leave this. I think that this should be enough to get us where we need to go. In terms of population, maybe we'll add a little bit more down here. And I'll be okay with a bit of cul-de-sacking down here because it's not an extreme cul-de-sac. We're going to have lots of density back here. And the reason why I want all that density is because we have the train station here. I'll shield a bit of this. But we do need our connection. And I'm hoping that it still makes a connection to the train station. I do not think it's going to. These are not quite as forgiving as some of our other paths. So what we could do is come through, place this here, and I'm wondering. It has severed our connection, unfortunately, over to our train, which is really what we cared about. Okay, and what I had to do to get this to work is actually pull that through with angle so that it's 
pointing a little bit closer to the train. And now that connection's made and over here, I had to pull another node in. So not quite perfect as I'd like it to be, but it's perfectly acceptable. There we go. So let's go, let's go work on our fishing industry. So we already have a road here and this is not gonna work for us and we'll take a look at why. So if we look at our fishing industry, there's a couple of things to know. So first of all, there are a couple of different types of fishing harbors that we have available to us. We have anchovy, salmon, shellfish, tuna, fish farm, algae farm, seaweed farm, and then we also have a fish market and a fish factory where we can take our fish and process them into fish sticks or whatever, canned fish. <laughs> so we need to be able to complete the entire cycle for this industry, which includes collecting the raw material and either selling it or processing it to send it out. So what we're gonna do is you first need to start out with just a fishing harbor. So we'll do that. And to unlock the fishing industry, we're gonna need 250,000 units of fish caught. So let's place a couple of these. And we can replace some of these down the line. And we'll tee that right in. But this isn't good enough. This doesn't do the trick. What we need to do is actually create some fishing routes. So this is the exciting part. You've got to end and begin it at the same fishing harbor, but it gives you the opportunity to catch some fish. So it works just like a road. And one of the unique things about this is you can actually leave your uh, tile area to go and catch fish. And what you'll see here is that there are different colors that denote the different types of fish that can be caught in these areas. So shellfish can be caught in some of the deep water areas. The salmon can be caught in some of the river areas that have a little bit more flow, a little bit deeper, uh, not extreme flow. That's where you'll find some of the tuna, the deepest high flowing areas. And then along the coast, you'll find some anchovies. And interestingly, over here, it's showing us tuna where we have our water pipes. And my guess is that's because there's a lot of flow heading towards those pipes. So we just have a general fishing route right now and it doesn't really matter where it goes as long as it goes somewhere and it comes back. So at this point, I'm gonna use it just to create activity. And if you wanted this to be completely optimized, you could certainly go through and give that a go. I never do that. I like the aesthetics. And you can see I can pop right out here if I want. And come right back around get these boats doing some interesting things. And there we go. Those are complete routes. It is mad at me. Multiple problems. Let's see what the problems are. Needs to have a start and end at the same harbor. And it is reduced because of the pollution here. So I talked about that. This will improve with time. As far as the fishing route, I'm wondering if we speed that up, if that resolves itself. Okay, and now you can see what these little boats will do. They'll come out here and follow our route. And they'll loop back around and we'll see lots of activity with these boats. They'll come in, they'll come out. And one of the really nice things about these is if you pop in the night, you'll see these little boats with all of the little lights following along their routes. And it really makes the place come to life. That's one of the things I really like about it. So there we go, that one resolved. It just needed some time. We still got dead fish. Um, oh, and even that one's resolved now. I guess the water's clearing out with time. And again, we could take a look in here. And if we look, there was pollution. I don't really see it anymore, so it should resolve with time. If we wanted to really be certain, we could certainly pop through here and throw in some of our some of our floating garbage collectors. There's just not a lot of pollution left, so eventually this should clean up. And I'm wondering if it has something to do with that that, air, uh, that thing where it's popping around. Not believing that it's connected even though it is. These two routes are identical, but this one's just unhappy. 
So we'll just, it's still sending boats out. So maybe it, make, it needs a boat to, to make a full loop back to, to realize that it's connected. So again, with this, there is the whole chain of the industry. So you have your collector that's, that's extracting your, uh, your resource, and then you need to either sell it directly to people or process it so it can be sold to commercial buildings. So we're going to do a little of both. Let's create a fish market. Maybe this would be a cool place to have in our downtown area. In fact, could we work this somehow into Biffa's Rock Park? Let's make it today. And maybe we take a corner of this park. And I suppose this could also work really nice near uh, a shore, something like, you know, Pike's Place in Seattle or, or something like that. But there's, this is just something else you could do with it. So now in the downtown area, there's this fresh market. You come grab your seafood, eat. We do need to fix our park. Let me do that real quick. So I did destroy some trees in this process and made some of these pads a little bit ugly. One of the one of the neat things that I kind of want to show you right now that is a new part of the DLC. We'll come through here with a tree lined path. And then we'll turn our road guidelines on and make this connection perfect. And now this has trees. In fact, why don't we get rid of some of these other ones? Okay, now if we upgrade all of these to tree-lined pads, we can actually change the trees on these pads. Okay, and that is a pretty spectacular improvement to this park. Maybe you don't love this. We could also line this with palm trees so it feels a little bit more separate. There we go. We have a fish market here. I'm sure that smells delicious. So, the other thing that we could do is process some of this fish and that is with our fish factory now this building produces pollution noise pollution and provides 53 workplaces so placing this in an industrial area with freeway access is probably going to be our best bet considering we have pretty good freeway access here in fact we could have even put this over here what we're going to do though is just connect on over and we will add that over in this area. We will avoid the destruction of our rock, preserve our natural features, and then go ahead and place our fish factory. So there is some terrain here. I should have looked at that first. And by some terrain, I mean there is unlimited terrain issues to deal with. So let's smooth this out a bit. Grading is always important. It's something that I do not do enough of, but we're not going to just accept this as is. We're going to fix it. Okay, and now we've graded this out. Let's get some water here and power hopefully is connected. Oh, it jumped. That is perfect. So now these two fish factories will be processing all of our fish. We could make a connection here if we wanted to make, the, make this not a cul-de-sac. I'm, I'm thinking I might do that. We'll use our curved road tool to make a nice connection. And if we wanted this to be a really smooth connection, we could even pop this back a little ways. Pull this out to the corner, pull this up a little ways. And because there's a lot of freight vehicles, we'll just have a nice sweeping turn down there. That is perfect. Make sure we have a stop sign here. There we go. And right here as well, we should take a look to make sure nothing funny happened. All right. So right now these are waiting for fish. It's gonna need the fish before it can produce commercial goods. And uh, there is no warehousing associated with this. So what we're gonna have is just a bunch of fish vehicles trucking the fish down here it'd be ideal if we could have these closer and you can see this resolved its issues and what we're seeing there's one fish truck in use here two over here they're loading up fish 25 of 26 workers and it's just general fishing industry so if we take a look at this what we'll see is we do not 
have enough fish caught yet to open up the other routes, but we're very close. We could also open up a fish farm, and again, that's another one of these things that needs to sit in the water. And what this does is it just, it farms fish here, it doesn't need any routes. In fact, we should probably change our routes so that the boat's not speeding through here, like a speed demon through our route. So we'll come through here and we can delete our routes, just find them and delete, just like you would anything else. And if you hold down the delete button, you can delete them in mass. And then just rebuild them like they're roads. And now we're clearing that fish farm. You can see these take up a lot of space. So we have three right here and that's it. We're tapped out. So this will also produce fish. Uh, once they get to the final growth stage, they'll send some freight trucks out. Those will go both here. Let's see. We still have no fish in here. And over here as well. This we do have fish. So we sold some fish here. They came here. And obviously you can make this super efficient by containing this to one area, but this will do the trick as well. And now these have, this has uh, materials. You can see it's producing 8,000 fish a week, not enough fish. We're kind of stuck waiting for the fish to come here. And we just, we don't have enough materials to justify those factories. Now, what I'm interested in is what does each of these routes produce in terms of fish? And interestingly, it doesn't really tell you. Talks about the noise pollution, 50, 26 workplaces. And we look at these, it's about the same, but these have a high catch rate. Oh, oh yeah. Hmm. Interesting. And then, so the next to unlock will be the anchovy. That's a quarter million fishing units along with the salmon. The shellfish is 2 million, and the tuna is also 2 million. Now, you're not going to be able to catch all these on the same map all the time, necessarily. So you might just need to be accept accepting of the fact that, you know, here for tuna, unless we can get a route to, to come up here, and I, maybe it'll let us. Let's see. Holy cow. It's going to let a boat come up there. That is insane. <laughs> so... I guess we will be able to get tuna. Uh, you're gonna, you might not have the ability to get these in every map, and that's okay. But you don't necessarily need to. That said, I think we're gonna do. It. We're gonna send them right up there. We'll have the salmon looping back here. We'll have the tuna going up there, and then right along the shore, we'll we'll need to come and scoop these up. So you're, we're gonna need to have at least one dock for each of these in of, of these different fish types. So we've got four more coming, plus we have an algae farm and a seaweed farm. And once we have all of those, all of our processing is going to look really well merited. So why don't we just let this go for a second and see if we can get a little bit more going. Okay, so we finally have reached our threshold to unlock some more harbors. So as I was waiting, waiting for both the population milestone, which we're almost there, and the fishing milestone, I wanted to figure out exactly how many fish each of these boats catches. So a couple things to know, the normal fishing boat, very little fish being caught. So we're looking at about a thousand fish uh, per boat. Not very good. The anchovy fishing boat, it doesn't tell you the number, but it's 2,000 at max efficiency. It's variable at how much each boat will produce, but it's 2,000 maximum. Salmon, the exact same thing. So now these two will be twice as efficient as these. Uh, interestingly, when we pop up to the shellfish and the tuna, we're looking at 48,000 and 64,000 per boat, respectively. And the fish farm, we're looking at 4,800. Seaweed, we're looking at approximately 8,000. And then the seaweed, we're looking at 14,400. So as you're going through, if you don't want to keep all these, you don't have to. In fact, what I'm going to do is take a look at these and see if maybe I can eliminate one of them. So 
Shellfish is in this area. I've not unlocked either of those. So <laughs> we're gonna leave these. These will eventually become shellfish routes. And I think we're gonna put these new routes over here because we need access to both anchovies, which is right along the shore here, and salmon, which is up here. So we've got all of these water pumps and I've never really liked this. It's taking brackish water and pumping it into the city. Not, that's not a great look. So this produces approximately 120,000 meters uh, or, 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 or cubic meters of water a week. Price is reasonable. Electricity, reasonable. The upkeep of this, it produces just a little bit more water. So we're about 40,000 cubic meters of water more, but it is three times the price per week. And the electricity consumption is considerably higher, about 80 kilowatts. So from a noise standpoint, identical. From a cost standpoint, it is almost four times as much to build. That said, I would much rather have this. So what we're gonna do is look at this. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these. Learn how to count with City Planner. <laughs> so what we need to do is when we're placing these, we need to make sure that there's no pollution anywhere near these. And the other type of pollution that this will produce is light pollution. And I'll show you why in just a minute. But I'm gonna place eight of these and then get rid of those and we'll be right back. Okay, so that's eight. We just need to hook these up with our water pipes. That one's good. This one needs a water pipe. We'll have an easement underneath this house. I believe that's all of them. So I'm gonna get rid of these and we'll see if I missed any. Looks about right. So I wanna take a look at these at night because you can see why these can be a problematic asset if they're in the wrong place. So lots of light coming from these. You got to be really careful that you're not putting these in a place near, like right in the middle of a residential neighborhood. Those lights casting down would be very problematic. Okay, so we do need more population. So before I get that fishing industry placed, let's increase our population here. And again, we'll place some fences here. We'll use our grid. Just to make sure that we aren't inadvertently fencing in areas where it's, or zoning in places where it's not appropriate. Now there is a weird thing here. If I come back through here and up zone this road or change it, it will go the full four tiles back. In fact, over here, that is the case that in pretty much this entire area, I didn't do that. And as a result, what you see is that there's a bunch of space. So we're not getting our maximum density here. I could zone these back and then eliminate some of these houses. And what you'd see is on the outside, they come back as full four by four lots. And that connects through now, so we're good. We're almost at our population milestone, which means we need to get our fishing boats ready. All right, so We'll come through here and I want to have an anchovy fishing. And look at that, we've got some water issues occurring and that is causing these to pop up. So we're gonna need to let this clear out a little bit. And maybe even do a bit of terraforming to try to get this fixed. Looks like it was depressed a bit in the back. It even seems to drop down a bit here, which is causing this to go underwater which is not what we want. And we'll use our angle to make a connection here. Try to get it as close to 90 as we can. Looking okay. So right here, we've got an anchovy route. Right here, we've got a salmon route. Ideally, I'd like these reversed. Unfortunately, I do not live in an ideal world. For some reason, I couldn't get this one to pop down correctly. I'm gonna pause this and see if I can. We'll give it one more shot. Okay, and the reason why I say that's ideal is our anchovies are right along the coast here. So I would much rather, you see there's some right here. I would much rather, if I'm going to do this, not have these routes crossing too badly. So the anchovies are the 
orangish color and the pink color is salmon. Okay, and the goal here is just to try to keep that line inside of those areas so that when they put their nets down, they can catch lots of anchovies. We'll do the exact same thing here with the salmon. And there we go. We've got two new routes established. Boat's already going down there. You can see that there's eight workers here going to get fish. Here, we've got 11 of 28. And we have boats, and when we come and look at that at night, look at that. They're even going up the river because apparently that's a thing they can do. <laughs> so, uh, we'll, we'll take it. That is, that is uh, completely fine. And this really brings your waterfront to life. You can see we've just got boats everywhere. We've got our cargo ships coming in. We've got our passenger ships coming in. I believe we have passenger ships around here. Got our ferries. Interesting. So we actually do not have, we actually do not have a harbor. We'll have to do that at some point. Um, not part of this particular build, but we need to get one. Very, very interesting. I thought that we had one. So that's, that's for our normal passenger boats. So we'll need to do that at some point, but it really brings this to life and it looks a lot better as a result. And now we have a new industry that is, is doing quite well for us. Let's open the budget panel. Let's see if we can find out where this is occurring. We have our fishing industry. Not very much income and lots of expense right now, but that will turn around as we produce lots of fish and start getting them processed. If we swing back over to our processing, we now can see that it's operating all the time and it's creating commercial goods. So that is beneficial for us. So even though this doesn't need necessarily a, uh, a warehouse, I'm curious. We just go through here. Obviously we don't want an open air warehouse yard, but a small warehouse, if we just add that here and we set this to commercial goods and we empty it, if they'll take these goods and just move it right in here and export them. I think that's what'll happen. Way to test that. You can see it right now. There's routes going back and forth. We're not seeing it exactly, but I saw it for a split second that, yes, you see that there's a route going back and forth. It's not a bad idea to get these set up so you can grab this and really maximize the efficiency of what's happening between these and keep things moving really, really well. So again, let's take a look at the budget panel. Things are improving here. We're still losing money, but it's gonna get better. And there's an ebb and a flow to all of the industries, whether it's fishing or the other industries, DLC industries, you'll see that from time to time, you just don't make as much. So with that, I think we're gonna save the other two fishing industries for the next one. They're gonna take a little while to get to. We have uh, 2 million <laughs> to catch. Uh, we also need 80 and 3.2 million respectively for the, uh, the algae and the seaweed farm. Uh, and those are gonna open up some policies. I wanted to get to those today, but they're related to this. We could open up a couple of policies. F sustainable fishing makes people happier, decreases fish yields. I don't think we're really interested in that right now. Um, so we'll do that maybe at the very end once we unlock everything. Dolphin safe fishing, same thing. Decreases fish yield by 25, increases citizen happiness. And then the other one that we have, let me see if it's even available at this point. We have our fishing license. We can uh, increase our tax income by 5% and make people less happy. Algae based water filtering. We need an algae farm. And our tourist travel card uh, will increase our tourists here, but we need an inner city bus station, which we'll do in the next one. So lots of really fun stuff to get to, but I think we're going to hold off till the next one. We've hit our population milestone and we have done some really interesting work today. So I hope that you've enjoyed this. If you did, please hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so and stay tuned for this brief city tour. Take care. Bye-bye.